Hello everyone, welcome back to the TJ Omega channel for day 1140 of our daily content grind. So, we're back to doing the Toy Store Life, and this is my favorite subset of things to do, which is basically me just kind of going over some of the most odd, unusual, and frankly weird requests and things I've been asked for in this store, uh, you know, what, you know, whatever. So, um, it's always a blast because you know we suffer from a situation of where like because we are labeled as a toy store on google anything someone searches for a toy store or any kind of toy in their area that could potentially fall under our category we come up you know i cannot tell you how many grandmas i've had coming up that tells me oh i i googled for canasta boards and it said you had canasta boards i'm like no no, <laughs> not those kind of games. So it's always fun to see what comes in here. Now, if you are unfamiliar to these, we've done two of these in the past, and I do them whenever enough weird requests and asks have accumulated for me to basically fill out a video. So we are on the third attempt. Now, it's actually been a while since we did one of these because, frankly, so many of the requests that I have gotten that don't fit our category have been so much the typical stuff. So typical stuff is like video game based, you know? Just the other day, I was asked for a replacement cable for an Xbox 360 controller. I don't have anything video game based here, let alone re uh, replacement parts for video game things. And we get that asked all the time. Like, I've had someone walk into the store, do a full lap, see absolutely nothing but toys and TCGs, and actually ask me, where are your PS5 games? Not, do you have, but, like, where? Like, the actual expectation. Because, again, if someone puts in, like, local video games, all Google cares about is that games part, and it will turn up us in the search results. And on one hand, we get a ton of awareness because of people searching for just absolute random stuff and finding us instead. But it doesn't exactly translate into sales because most people who come in here under those pretenses have no idea what we actually have and are going to be disappointed with what they find. So here's the list of the most recent ones, uh, the ones that, you know, the ones that we can talk about. And some of them they do kind of fall under what you would find in a typical toy store, like uh, squish toys. This is easy. You know, this is no problem. Like, eh, like it's, it's, it's a normal stress toy. It's a desk fidget thing. You can find these just about anywhere that has a typical toy department, a Walmart or a Target. I mean, I'm pretty sure even like a toy section at Walgreens would have some kind of like squishable toy. This is just the kind of like typical desk toy that a lot of people have these days. But it's not the kind of toy we have. So this is kind of like a perfect example of like, Google said you would have it. Like, no, because we're not that kind of toy store. We're collectible toys. We're vintage toys. Okay, fine. Where do we go? Like, go to the normal big box stores. Where else do you expect? Now, to be fair, if you have a more traditional toy store, you could probably find something like this in there. By traditional toys, I mean things like rubber snakes i have been asked for quote fake snakes i'm not sure exactly how fake they want it did you want something that a kid could play with it's just like a a, a a tube of rubber that's like vaguely painted like a snake or do you want something that could pass for an actual python are you are you trying to amuse a kid or are you trying to prank somebody uh, it doesn't matter. I don't have any snakes in here. I think the closest I have is like a Cobra Commander. <laughs> this, this is as close as I have to a snake anything in this store. That kind of stuff I can understand. You don't under, you don't know what kind of toy store it is until you call. Now, there are more traditional toy stores in the area that would absolutely have something like this. Uh, in fact, north of me and south of me, I can think of different stores that would have something like this. So, they tried to shoot from the middle. They missed. Now, 
I was waiting for just one more weird request to come in. Just one more thing that kind of made me go, huh, that's an unusual ask. And in fact, one came in today. And that was the tipping point between I don't have enough to do a video and I got enough to do a video now. What he wanted were stuffed peas. Like specifically asking me for stuffed peas peas like a like a plush toy but it's peas and i'm not entirely sure what actually inspired this i mean number one did you get a kid interested in vegetables to the point where they actually want toys of the vegetables because that's kind of a parenting miracle and I ge like I genuinely wish like they were in store when they asked because that's when you can actually chat somebody up and go hmm that's actually a very unusual request how did that come about and usually when it's something like this it's like yes my my kid just thinks they're cute or my kid saw it online and thought it was cute they can't get it out of their head or like okay my girlfriend thought it was adorable and I'm trying to find one for her for a birthday or early Christmas etc that kind of thing so yeah I actually had to. I had to Google it because to me, a plushie of peas in a pod, a plushie of that is actually on par with what I thought was the previous weirdest request I had gotten, which was toy horseshoe crabs. So I had to Google to see if this thing was actually made. And yes, it is. In fact, all of the visual examples I'm using here are stock photos from Amazon. All of these are available on Amazon right now, and most of these people probably should have just went there first. But, you know, people try to find it in person, especially if they need it quickly, so I get it. But, yeah, stuffed pea pod, which I also found out is a food. I didn't even know you could stuff a pea pod, but, hey, apparently you can. Uh, one of my favorite requests I ever got, juggling pins. Juggling pins or juggling balls. Now, keep in mind... You could probably get like, you know, like a cheapo croquet set from like a, from like a, the sporting goods section of a normal store. Uh, basically, like juggling balls, all you need are basically just three balls with enough weight to them. And you could potentially juggle them. Uh, juggling pins, a lot more specific. You know, of course, they are weighted a certain way. They're shaped a certain way. You can't just go get a bowling set and start juggling the, the pins from that. You could, but it's generally not advised. This is something that I don't even know what kind of store you would be going to in order to find something like this. Now, potentially like a magic store might have juggling pins. There is a magic store somewhere in the area. It's like a good 30, 40 minute drive from where I currently am. So I can understand wanting a closer source, but offhand, like, it's just an odd ask, right? It's just a super weird thing to ask for, like juggling pins. Locally sourced juggling pins. <laughs> Offhand, yeah, like there's no store around here where you could possibly get that. And I, again, I'm, I'm struggling to find out, I'm struggling to think of a store outside of like, because like, honestly, even the magic shop, I the, the one that I know of, even that is a stretch, you know? I don't, genuinely think you could find juggling pins there but it's that kind of novelty shop you would have to be able to find in order to actually find a juggling pin in person you know maybe your best bet you know your best bet there is like get just like a pla honestly your best bet there is just get like a plastic bowling set like a toy bowling set from like a goodwill or something and just fill the pins with sand <laughs> it's about the best you could do locally Switches and joysticks for an arcade cabinet. Now, we do have an arcade cabinet here, but it's just a multi-cade. It's left over from the previous owner, and we have no replacement parts for it. There is nothing we can do with it. Um, now, the weird thing about this is that there is actually a... There is a store in town that might actually have this. So, like, there's, like, an an arcade novelty store like the kind of stuff you see at like dave and busters and like your local stuff like skee ball games you know like those more traditional like arcade games or like barcade style like table 
table games where like you you have the tra table you can get your drinks on but there is a game built in that you can see underneath the top that kind of thing there's a store that sells those why they didn't check down there i have no idea or maybe they did didn't get the answer they're looking for decided call random toy store that's somewhere else in the area i don't know why i don't get why but that's what they do <laughs> And I understand, like, this is the kind of thing where I'm like, why are you so insistent on finding something in person? This is absolutely something you should be ordering online to make sure it's exactly the one you need. Even, you know, even if you found a store in person that had replacement parts for an arcade machine, it's unlikely that they would be the type that your cabinet needs. So this is a little weird. This is a little weird to be asking for in person. This is absolutely something you order online. And I can't, for the life of me, think of a situation where you would be in such a rush to need a brand new joystick or switch for your arcade cabinet that you need a replacement now. Outside of the possibility that your whole business is renting cabinets and one, one of your popular ones just happened to go down right away, in which case, cannibalize one of your less popular units for it. Don't, you know, like, it was confusing. It was very confusing. Um, because it's absolutely something you're basically required to order online. We're going to follow this up with another weird hobby one that I could see why someone would call a shop like this, but also, no, never. With This would never be here. Um, clock mechanisms. Someone asked me for mechanisms to build your own clock. Now, keep in mind, clock building is akin to, like, an erector set or a more mechanical style of model kit to a lot of people. So this is a genuine hobby thing. You could potentially get something out of, like, you know, a, you know like a homemade clock that you could kind of sort of see as being something you'd find in a hobby shop. And if you Google hobby shop, this kind of place would come up because, yeah, collecting toys, playing TCGs, that all does count as a hobby. So it's one of the terms that comes up when you Google for the store. It's not the kind of hobby we would ever deal in. You know, it's not a toy. It's nothing based on a toy. Um, you could call it a toy in a sense, but for the most part, yeah, this was just a super weird one. Super weird. Like, I don't, I don't know why I would like <laughs> clock. I don't like specifically clock mechanisms. Now, granted, it might be a desperation thing. Like I've checked everywhere else. There isn't any other store. I need a clock that needs repairing right now. Um, Maybe a hobby shop has something. I could absolutely see that being as like, I'm out of options. Let's start looking for the weird stuff. Okay, fine. Maybe you call us then if you're looking for clock mechanisms. But that's about the only situation I can think of. Here's one that's completely out of our realm, and I have no idea why anyone would even think to ask a toy store for one of these. An old VCR. Someone asked me for a VCR. Go to a pawn shop. Go to a flea market. Don't come asking a toy store for a VCR. Now, typically, that's already weird enough. Like, this store that mentions absolutely nothing about retro electronics. Okay, I, that's already weird enough that you would call here looking for a VCR. Um, this also came with mentioning something about a rare copy of The Lion King. And this is where I really wish that this person was more coherent when they were describing this to me, because I could not figure out what they were describing. Because they mentioned something about a $600,000 Lion King thing. And I have no idea what they were talking about. I don't know if it's like some rare version of the VHS that has like something in it that the later copies don't. I don't know. Like, like, is are you trying to play your copy of the Lion King to see if it is the rare version? I don't know of a rare version of the Lion King. I don't know anything of the Lion King that costs six hundred thousand dollars, except for maybe the rights to the movie itself. But that said. VHS, uh, uh, like I, I don't like a, a VHS player, a VCR. Why would you ask here? 
What reason would you ever think a toy store is going to have something like this? And again, I have no explanation. He was just fascinated with some super rare, expensive Lion King something or other. And I have no idea what it really was. Just that he really wanted to know something about the Lion King and it required a VCR. Here's one where I can kind of understand, but also why would you call here? Wood stain. Now, believe it or not, I can actually see a train of logic to this. Uh, the one would be like, if you are doing some kind of hobby building that does involve wood in some way, you know, like we said, you know, building clocks is a thing. You can build the exterior of those as well. Um, you know, there's a lot of things like bird houses and things that you, you know, that would require that. Um, anything that's like, uh, like sl old fashioned slot car style that, you know, you could potentially use it for that balsa wood planes. You could need it for that. So if they think we're like a general hobby shop that carries anything they could need for any hobby they want. Okay. Yes. Wood stain might actually be something you might think a hobby store would have. That said, why wouldn't you just call Home Depot? Why wouldn't you just go down to Home Depot? Why hedge your like why hedge your bets on like a really random toy shop that Google pulled up when you could go to the store that is guaranteed to have exactly what you're asking for? So, <laughs> bizarre choice, right? Absolutely bizarre choice to to call here for it. Like I said, I can see the thread of logic. Depending on the hobby they are actually invested in, I could see why you would think we might have it. But, you know, it's still a very weird ask when there's such easier options, right? Um, here's, a, but here's the final one for the day. Final one for the video. And this one is kind of tangentially connected. So, this one does involve model kits. But no... It was not as someone asking me for model kits. We get asked for that a lot. We just don't have a way of getting distribution for them, uh, especially Gundam kits, which I would love to be able to offer here. But someone called me, and the request was not for model kits. It was, can you repair or build model kits? Someone was actually looking for a service to have model kits built for them and or to repair existing kits. Now, I'm not sure where you would find this as an actual service that you could ask someone to do. Understand this is Florida. You know, this is the retirement capital of North America. Uh, we do have you know, older clientele. And I have had people in here that had a ton of model kits. And we've been offered very large collections of model kits before that, frankly, the person who was collecting them all those years was honestly just too old to build them anymore. You know, the, the hands were not dexterous enough to handle the small parts or do the painting. But if the collector, if said collector of those kits still wants to see them built, then I could understand wanting to see, have someone come and do it or to bring them in so someone else can build the kit for them. That's all completely understandable. Um, though, why you would ever ask someone to offer it as a service? Again, you can see where there's a train of logic here. I can understand why someone would need that service, but I can't fathom why anyone would set up such a niche service for any reason. It's a very, very, very bizarre request. Um, and frankly, while I have had clients in here trying to sell model collections because they felt like they were too old to put them together themselves, that did not seem to be the case of the person who was calling. Like, they didn't sound old. They didn't indicate why they wanted someone to do it for them. They just wanted someone, they just wanted to pay someone to build a model kit. You know, and frankly, if I had the time of day, I might have just taken them up on the offer myself under the table. But because I went through the shop, I have to represent the shop, so I can't do that. So we kind of left it at that. And right now it's it rings out as one of like the weirdest, weirdest requests I've ever had. Can you please build a model kit for me? That one, that one has not been topped yet. And that's going to do it. 
that is another list of all the weird things to get asked of in this store. Again, I get asked for weird, random things we wouldn't have all the time, but you've heard so many of them, I have to wait for the stupid, really weird ones, like stuffed peas and, you know, clock mechanics. Uh, but that, that will do it for today. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you got a laugh out of it. This is what it's like to work in the toy store. That is the toy store life. And that's the video. I will see you next time.